uh, Lisa, to this day, we still hear from people uh, that they're still waiting to get through to deed or still waiting for their money. Do you have any uh, uh, reason for, as to why that is and how many Nevadans are still waiting to be paid? Um, sure, thanks uh, for having me. Um, as you probably know, uh, one of the challenges that we've been having at Dieter uh, this whole time is just the magnitude of the claims. So the strike force wrapped up their work uh, last week and we had caught up with the backlog in PUA from August. Uh, but then we still have had claims come in since then. And uh, we're uh, very close to catching up the backlog uh, up to August in the regular UI. Um, but again, claims continue to come in. So just the, the sheer volume is uh, what's holding some of the folks up, just getting through all the claims. Uh, and particularly the fraudulent claims. Uh, last week, we had over 100,000 new applications come into the PUA system. Uh, and we think that the vast, vast majority of those are fraudulent claims, but we still have to look at them all in some way to find the, the 100 or 1,000 folks who are legitimate uh, in there waiting to get an answer. So you're saying of the 100,000 applications you get, 99% of them might be fraudulent? At this point, uh, so if you think about PUA, that is the program that is for self-employed and gig workers. We've had over, uh, as of December, we had had over 800,000 people apply for that. Um, clearly, uh, it's very unlikely that uh, Nevada has 800,000 people who are self-employed, much less an additional 100,000 last week. Um, so yes, we believe that at this point, what we're seeing in the self-employment uh, side is uh, mostly fraudulent claims. And part of the problem with the fraudulent claims is um, one of the th issues is, is that people are getting their debit cards, but somehow those debit cards are being drained by criminals either here or in other states. So Bank of America is shutting down these cards. Is there any way to work around this problem? This is a, a really challenging issue. Uh, we we go through, we have our, our hallmarks of fraud that we are looking for. So we, we close down cases. And uh, if we inadvertently get someone who is a legitimate claimant, they can call us, uh, send us a, a, a picture of their ID and then we can release their claim. Um, so those we have a little more control over. If it trips up one of Bank of America's hallmarks of fraud and they have their own fraud team and their own fraud measures, um, then we don't have any control over whether that card is released. I mean, we can get a picture of your driver's license and say, we believe that you're a valid claimant, um, but that at for many of these cards, it's in Bank of America's hands. Uh, last I had heard, even though we were clearing cards, they had a backlog of cards to clear as well. Um, so, and I, 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 I can't even begin to imagine how challenging that is for folks to hear from us that, that we've done everything we can and they have to call Bank of America and then they can't uh, get through to someone there or can't get them to release it. Um, one of the things we're doing is, is exploring alternative payment options because uh, this uh, is just a super challenging situation for folks and uh, it's very frustrating for us and claimants that we don't have control over uh, those releasing those payments. So we are working on finding some alternative payment options for people. Would it be overly simplistic to say, why not just send them a check? Uh, it would be. <laughs> so many things in, in the world of Dieter are um, not nearly as simple as you would think. Uh, we do send folks a check uh, if, their, if their card was frozen and uh, they, they end up with back weeks, we'll send them what we call a special check, but that takes about three weeks to process. Uh, so, I, I mean, literally at this point, if you think about, we are paying uh, on average 300,000 Nevadans every week. Um, so when we had a conversation with the state treasurer's office about 
writing checks. I mean, literally, we would have to order check stock to issue those kinds of payments. Uh, and that's something else that would take several weeks. So um, we've explored a lot of options and uh, expanding the range of things like direct deposit. Uh, we're also looking at Venmo, PayPal, Zelle, uh, and and even uh, an arrangement with another bank. So we're we're exploring all the the options that once we get them in place, we think will resolve this issue. Another complaint we hear is that people do hold uh, online for a deed or representative. They're told to leave a phone number and someone will call them back, but they're never given the prompt to leave their phone number. Are you aware of this? Yes, I am aware of this uh, issue. So what, what happens is that in the beginning of the day, that message comes on and you can leave a phone number. Um, and uh, those, those numbers sort of get queued up and our staff call folks back uh, towards, once we've gotten enough calls in the queue that it's gonna take all day to call people back, we no longer take phone numbers. Uh, to call people back because we won't be able to get to them that day. Uh, and if we, we collected them for days, we'd, it'd just be another place we were behind. Um, I've asked the staff about updating that message, but we are actually in the process of updating the whole phone system. And so this is where we're often, uh, we often have two not great choices. Do we just focus our efforts on updating the phone system so we can handle more people or do we go back and correct something that will be obsolete hopefully by the end of this month? So uh, again, it's, it's something that we know is frustrating for folks, uh, but we've chosen to kind of focus on moving ahead toward a more modern system. As it stands now, how, how long will the state extended unemployment benefits last and how many Nevadans are relying on those benefits right now? So we, like I said, we have about 300,000. It's dropping in a little bit as some folks are getting uh, jobs again. We have about 300,000 people every week getting benefits. Uh, so the extension applied to folks who were in each one of the lines, as it were, so regular unemployment, the pandemic unemployment assistance, the state extended benefits, and the um, PEUC pandemic emergency unemployment compensation. <laughs> we have a lot of programs. Um, so th that's 300,000 Nevadans who really uh, have not been able to go back to their jobs because those jobs have not come back. Uh, and they they need this extension, and uh, we are hoping if Congress is going to extend these benefits even further, they do it with a little more notice, so we can put the programming in ahead of place instead of having to. What we had to do in December was stop a bunch of these programs and then restart them a day later, which is very problematic. Um, so uh, there are, we are still working with the Department of Labor to get approval on the sequencing and the way Nevada state law applies under the, the extended benefits and how they interact with the state extended benefits. We are, um, and unfortunately, because Congress or the federal government is paying for those benefits, we have to have their approval. Uh, and it's a, quite a bureaucratic process before we can pay for certain people who, especially the folks who are in the state, un, the state extended benefits period. We want to make sure we get the sequence right so they don't lose any weeks that they're entitled to. And unfortunately, some people are kind of falling into a gap right there waiting for that approval. We're hoping to have it this week, if at all possible. And this, I imagine you're watching the developments in Washington with this uh, new stimulus plan being debated. 1.9 trillion is the number. It could be less than that. Do any idea of what Nevada could be getting for unemployed people from that if it passes whole? My uh, understanding is that the uh, the uh, the. FPUC, which is uh, a, a plus up, uh, which is currently $300 for 11 weeks, would uh, be um, would change to $400. Uh, I believe they're discussing extending the benefits through September, um, and I've sort of learned to not um, count my chickens before they're hatched because there's. <laughs> 
a lot of potential for that to change. Uh, so like I said, our hope is that they pass it and give us uh, enough time to implement any changes so truly people can continue to receive their benefits without interruption, uh, which has been uh, very hard as they keep changing the rules every time they update this law. Is there some danger that some people will fall through the net, that they will have exhausted state and federal benefits? Are we getting close to that? Have we already passed that? Um, for some folks, uh, if, if your business was impacted in February of last year and there were some businesses that is, even before the governor declared the emergency, their, their businesses were feeling the impact. Um, the, even with all of the current laws put together right now, 57 weeks is the maximum number of benefits. So if you started in February, we're a year later, it's 52 weeks later, you're, you're looking at maybe five more weeks of benefits. And then if Congress doesn't add on to that 57, we're gonna start seeing more and no, more Nevadans exhaust their benefits literally. Um, and uh, that is completely uh, the federal rules. We have no control over that. And Nevada continues to be one of the hardest hit states. So um, it is a, a matter of some urgency that Congress take a look at that and provide assistance for folks who are going to start exhausting their benefits just a little bit past a year out from when they started filing. So this $1.9 trillion plan would not extend benefits for those people? I believe it would extend benefits. I think the idea is that their benefits would be extended to September. Uh, I, I just haven't seen the exact deal details. And like I said, I believe there is a, um, an additional amount that they would get on a weekly basis as well. Dieter, I mean, is a jobs agency. Have you been able to fulfill that mission or is it all about just trying to get money to people? And when I say the mission, I mean training people for jobs. Right, um, right. We are the state's lead workforce agency. We work in conjunction with uh, the Department of Education and Higher Education and GoEd, which is economic development. Uh, we have been able to move uh, a lot of our workforce support online. So our rehabilitation uh, division was the first one in the country to go completely online for applications and uh, some of our services. So we can support people with disabilities in terms of their attempts to uh, get past barriers to getting jobs, including training and transportation. So that's that's been uh, really great for people with disabilities. Uh, in the traditional workforce area, we have a lot of our services are available online. So if you, and this is all through the Employee Envy portal. So if you go there, the top part is the unemployment benefits for um, gig workers. But if you scroll down, we have a lot of our services and training available online. We are having virtual job fairs in partnership with, oh. Hopefully you didn't go away. Okay, no, sorry about that. Uh, we're having virtual job fairs in partnership with uh, the One Stop Shop uh, organizations in Las Vegas and Reno. So a lot of a lot of that uh, those services are available online for folks, and we would encourage you to think about, you know, is this an opportunity to get some training or a certificate? Uh, look for jobs that are there. Uh, we do know some employers are looking uh, and sort of uh, it, it's kind of tough for them because there is this sense that unemployment is so high here that are, there aren't any jobs and that's that's not true. Um, but there are, pe there are resources for people to get back to work. And this is sort of a sensitive question, but uh, previous director of Dieter resigned because she was getting threats. Is that still an issue for you? Um, I, you know, I have some people who find me online uh, or, you know, various forums and uh, they don't have, uh, some of them don't have very kind words about uh, our, my competence uh, or whether I should be in this job. Um, and, you know, you just really have to kind of understand that they, they have part of the picture and if, if they got a decision that um, they don't agree with, 
uh, or, you know, we have, we're, they're still in the backlog and there still are thousands of people still in the backlog waiting for a decision. I mean, I can understand the, the frustration and the, you know, the, the anger, um, in any other year, this, this would be, uh, we never would have gotten caught in a situation where people had to wait months and months for an answer. Um, so uh, we're doing everything we can to shorten that timeline and get to all the folks who are still waiting. Uh, and, um, you know, the, the other challenge, I think, for everybody who works at Dieter is uh, you, this is a federal program. It is a reemployment program. And so the criteria to get these benefits are fairly narrow. You have to be attached to the workforce. Uh, you have to have a certain number of quarters of uh, salary or um, payroll. Uh, so not everyone qualifies. And I think part of the narrative from all these new programs is that everybody can get unemployment benefits. And that just never has been true. Um, but I think we've created some expectations for folks that you know, we couldn't fulfill because that's not the way this program runs. Well, there's criticism and then there are death threats. Have you gotten death threats? I have, I have not gotten okay. death threats. I, no. Uh, so, um, and I, I think we've, uh, I, I hope we've been able to do a better job of explaining sort of what we're working on and what the challenges are. Uh, and, uh, you know, the most important thing we can do is resolve people's claims uh, and get them an answer or get them the benefits that they're eligible for. And, and we've gotten through thousands and thousands literally hundreds of thousands of claims. So I think that also is helping. Once you get through this and the pandemic is behind us and people are back to work and you get a little breathing room, what is it that you would want to change about the agency to make it better able to respond to the next time? Because there's always going to be a next time where we do have a, an economic shock like a pandemic or you know, a real estate implosion like we had back in 09. <laughs> Um, I think there there are certainly a couple of things. One of the things that's always been challenging for Dieter is when unemployment is low and there are very few people whose cases we're processing, we end up having to, uh, we lose staff over time uh, and we don't replace them because we don't need, you know, 600 people to process claims. And then, as you say, when an economic dislocation happens, they're getting more and more sudden and severe and abrupt, I think, in some ways. Um, so we are we actually had a, a very brief long term planning conversation yesterday with the team. What can we do uh, in terms of making staffing flexible? So one of the things we're looking at is making sure everybody on the Dieter team is cross-trained in unemployment and workforce because those are the two that kind of go back and forth over time. So we want to make sure we can redeploy our staff. Uh, and uh, you probably saw there's a little bit of money in the governor's budget to start stabilizing uh, our computer system so they can process more quickly and be more secure. And we have a, a long-term plan to look at modernizing the system completely. Uh, Dieter really is not alone. Um, pretty much every state agency could do with some uh, computer modernization, especially as fraud and attacks all go online. So um, I expect you'll see a lot of conversation about that in the legislative session is how do we modernize so we can be more responsive in an emergency. What kind of money would it take to modernize Dieter to the point where you would feel confident about it weathering the next crisis? Uh, we did have a, a, an independent uh, analysis of our computer system. They're, they're just sort of uh, initial look at what it would cost would be about $50 million over about three years. Uh, and so uh, that obviously is not currently in the governor's budget. And we're uh, our goal is to be sort of ready. What happens a lot of times for at least for Dieter is in a crisis year, the federal government will say, hey, we're investing this year in the middle of a crisis to fix the problem. And if you're ready to go, then you have a much better chance to get those investments. And that's our that's our goal is if the feds recognize that they need to invest in modernization, we'll have a, a, a request for proposal ready to go and we can 
move ahead with that. Well, Lisa, thanks so much for joining us. I'm sure we're going to want to circle around with you. Hopefully the worst is behind us and uh, people do get back to work and your services won't be needed as much. Give you some breathing room as well. Thank you yeah. so much. Thanks a lot.